Welcome. Let's go ahead and take a look at examining the derivative through the lens of rate of change. And as we do this, let's make note of a few things. First of all, we often think of a function as a model of some type of behavior. In this graph on the right, in black, we have the graph of a function and it models certain behavior. For example, uh, when the input of the function is zero, the output of the function is also zero. When the input of the function is eight, the output of the function is zero. We can see that between zero and eight, the function in, um, outputs lie below the x-axis or a negative. Whereas for x values greater than eight, the function values are above the x-axis and thus positive. So a function is a model of some type of behavior. Now often the derivative is conceptualized as the slope of the tangent line. Well, here in uh, light blue, we have a tangent line to the curve. And we could say, say that at this point, we could say that the line is tangent to the curve. And let's call this x coordinate x naught. It's some it's bigger than seven, but we don't know precisely. But what we can say is that the slope of this tangent line is equal to the derivative of the function that we have here in black at x naught. Now this notion of slope can be expanded more broadly to represent rate of change. And we can see that because slope is typically interpreted as the, or is defined in terms of the change in y or the vertical change in the line over the change in x. So this is a rate of change. It's comparing the change in the vertical direction to the change in the horizontal direction. So in general, we can say that the derivative describes um, how a function changes with respect to whatever independent variable um, there is for said given function. So let's go ahead and look at a quick example. So here we have the area of a circle. And we know that the area of a circle is pi r squared. And if I were to write the area of a circle as a function, the area of a circle is dependent on the radius of the circle. So as a function, area as a function of radius is equal to pi r squared. Now let's go ahead and find the rate of change in the area of the circle. So keeping in mind that radius is our independent variable, uh, the rate of change of the area of the circle will be the change in area over the change in radius, or dA dr. And notice that I'm not using the prime notation, if you will. I, while this is certainly equal to a prime of r, that interpretation does not help me as much in interpreting rates of change. And when interpreting rates of change, it is important to attend to units. So before we find dA dr, let's uh, pay attention for a moment on units. So area is typically measured in square units. Could be square feet, could be square miles, could be square inches. And radius of this circle that's measured in square units would just be measured in units. So when I look at finding a rate of change, my rate of change is going to be represented 
in this notation. That is the change in area, which is measured in units squared, over the change in radius, which is simply measured in units. So let's go ahead and uh, find this derivative. So dA dr is equal to pi by the constant multiple rule. And then we take the derivative of r squared, which gives me 2r. OK, so then uh, let's find the rate of change of the area when the radius is 3 units. So dA dr, when r is equal to 3 units, which could also be written as dA dr at 3, is equal to pi times 2 times 3, or 6 pi. Now this is a contextual um, situation, so we need to include units. Now this radius, or I'm sorry, this area changes with respect to radius, and it changes in units squared per unit. So what does this mean? Well, this means that the area of the circle is changing by 6 pi units per unit of increase in the radius. So I'm getting 6 pi units increase in area per unit of radius increase. And that doesn't happen for every radius measure. That only happens when the radius is 3 units. I hope you find this helpful.